Plastic Junkies back with today, today's review my finds from May to August of horror stuff could be comics, toys, a bunch of stuff I get asked a lot of questions like these are the typical questions I get asked by customers I wash their hair yeah I wash hair for a living so I'm at a regular job a little bit more uh, extra money because of tips but that's it but I'm happy doing that people ask me are you rich I say no I have no money saved uh, but you have a lot of toys so and comic books so you, you must be rich because you make a lot of money off it no I don't see it that way I see it that I enjoy it as a genre of collecting cranberry juice diluted naturally all natural um, I enjoy it as a genre of nostalgic like people call it vintage stuff and childish stuff me I do it it's because it has nothing to do with that I enjoy it because like I said once hold on like I said once if I could ingest plastic inside my vein I'll be a living plastic man not like uh, like the superhero literally made a pure plastic like a cyborg half man half plastic plastic junkie the ultimate collector in the universe of toys or something like that I would do my own action figure of myself with a eee, big smile on my thumbs up I have thumbs up or a plastic sword or uh, a shield with PJ on it or stuff like that that what would you do for what would you do and who would you give it to that it's all up in the air why should I leave it to my family because they want me to but that's all I have no idea what to do with that like yes I have a lot of stuff and but I rather just sell it all and sit on a, on, sit on, a, on, on money and pay and live on the on the fight of the stuff I, I had or I rather just give it to one member of my family which I don't know who it is yet but, but young one not an old one young one um, why do you do it why do I collect I, I enjoy doing it but it is very expensive like like come to fact that over the years I liked a guy an artist called Richard Corbin and Richard Corbin to me is an amazing artist for me he is pure horror for guys that love horror Richard Corbin is one of my favorite this is called Richard Corbin's art book front graphic novel back sorry it says uh, can't pronounce it Fantagore press 1495 US in 1875 and this one came out in hold on Fanta, yeah Fantagore press that's it Fantagore press uh, hold on hold on hold on sorry guys I know it's uh, I'm just trying to find the date it came out it just says printed in the new oh 1990 this book came out in 1990 this book is awesome Dean uh, book 1 to 10 from Fantacore Press uh, he he paints and then he, he uh, he's a painter like literally this guy is amazing you can even see if you want to see who he is that's him that's just a painting of himself he's one of my favorite all-time favorite children of the fire he did he did so many movies beyond supernatural dark mists hold on hold on I have to show you a good one they're one of my favorite ah this these old books death rattle I have a few of those old 1970 books there were so much of this it's unbelievable he also does a lot of this nudity and a lot of these creatures like this this is the dark planet it's called the dark planet leave it there sought out the book for a lot of rich corporate collectors that's me He's one of my favorites. He, I, I swear to you, if I would meet him, 
I met a few of my favorite people. I met uh, George, R J J J George A. Romero, Night of the Living Dead, the, the original guy that did the, the movies from the 1967. I met, I met Clive Barker. So I met a lot of the people that I wanted to meet in my life. Yes, I could have met Stan Lee, but I gave my ticket in 2012 to a friend of mine to go, he was dressed as Spider-Man, to go online to go and see, to go and get his autograph. Other books that I collected of Richard Corbin, The Raven and the Red Death, good book, good read, amazing artwork, that's what I like about him, it's his artwork. The Fall of the House of Usher, 1 and 2. Good read too, that's something that guys, honestly, just get it. Don't, don't waste your time uh, thinking about it. This one's called Edward Allan Poe's The Conquering Worm, Richard Corbin. This is not for kids. This is stuff that, that's underground that you have to understand that it's more horror. So this is a, a more of my, this I'm gonna write down not for kids in the minute I put up this video today. Other stuff he's done, he's done Bigfoot one to six. That's the first one. There's a, the six, number six. This one was from IDW. Uh, one to four, sorry, one to four. Good read. No, one to six, I think, I believe. Hold on. No, one to four. Got it off my friend. Another thing he's done is Rat God. Very cool. There's one, there's number four. And the recent thing he just did for started in 2016, which I can't find number two and three, is called Richard Corbin's Shadows of the Grave. Here's number one. I didn't read it yet. I just picked it up now. It's in black and white. Uh, like I said, I really like the way he does his horror. This guy is amazing. I have number one. I'm missing number two and three. It's out of print. Here's number four. Can't wait to read this, even though it's going to be broken up. Artwork I love. I give his artwork, any of his book, I give a five on five. I have some of his rare ones that I, I, I bought in the 70s. I paid between $15 to, to $50. That's going to be another review. That's going to be just on rare issues of uh, Richard Corbin. Here's number five, Shadows of the Grave. Shadows of the Grave. Richard Corbin, Shadows of the Grave. Mag the Hag, the Bone Collector in the back. Little short story. And this is number six. Pretty uh, with a zombie there grabbing a kid. That's pretty gruesome. And uh, more Mag the Hag in the back. As I go on with my collection, I find that I'm getting more. Let's say in time that I, I'm getting older and older, I, I find that I'm, I'm getting pickier and pickier in finding stuff. I'm buying stuff. Like I won't buy everything now. I've been trading a lot with a friend of mine that 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 just bought out a um, bought out a, a store downtown called Captain Quebec. He just resurfaced after seven years. And over since May till just recently, I picked up a few action figures from different conventions. This was one of them. This is the Vampirella. This is the skin version red, with the red uh, with the red uh, costume. Here you can see her buttocks. Nice cheeks. Not much articulation, I swear to you. It's two points of articulation. Three if you count the head, but the head's gonna pop off. Figure itself, I give it three on five for sculpt and color. It's still the most plastic gap. It came out in the 90s. Uh, the moon itself, I give it more. I give it five on five. The stand itself. The stand is like a little, you see a little lizard over there, you see? And this is the one with, this is not the one that comes with the figure that I have now. This is the blood version moon. There's the blue version moon that comes with this figure but I decided to put her together. She has a little peg that she stands, but honestly, it's so, so hard to keep her in the peg, and this, and it's really difficult to really put her in. I never have a chance. She never, never stays. She's so badly made, the feet, and to the, for the peg, that I really, uh, uh, 
I give this the the company that made this more collectibles a two. They're the same ones that made uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and then the second version of Buffy the Vampire Slayer was done by Previews, where it's more the the bubbles out out, out it's 3D with a sticker on top of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. Then, excuse me. Then, then they repackaged them into all plastic. They took out the, the board and they made it into plastic. They made it three times. The Buffy the six-inch figures. I still like this this set. There's a gold version, a black and white version, a glow in the dark version. The gold version came out for more collectibles only in a convention, only in the no, not the short. And different conventions from the, in the 90s and it comes in a white box it's gold I believe silver black and white painted and glow in the dark but I've never found and the Japanese one is glow in the dark I've never found one I don't know if it exists there's this version blood moon blue moon and a glow in the dark which I still didn't couldn't find over the years over the months I've also collected this line called guillotina and this is the second version of guillotina with a working guillotine, you push the thing up. Hold on. Okay, see? And it actually works. There's a little peg. Oops. That goes underneath here with a, a little uh, chain. There's two swords in the back and some skulls. Only three. Here, there's one, one sword broken and more skulls. You could put a little figure there and pretend to chop off the head. This is Guillotino in all her glory. She's very sought after. Not much of articulation at all. It's the same, same thing as Vampirella, but she only has one hole for a peg. You do put it in here, but all the figures that come from this line, it's a Japanese line. I cannot pronounce the name. That's why I never did a review on this. There's a Frankenstein girl and there's a witch and I believe that's it there's a Frankenstein one that's blue and sorry she's beautiful love the paint job again this thong type version just like Vampirella so you have two th th thong, th thong, thong, thongs yep I'm gonna put enough for kids in big right away and when I posted today of August 7th it's a Monday 2017 I like these figures, but they do not stand for beans. Figures paint job, I give it a, a high mark, five on five. But for articulation and not standing, I give it. Let's get. I, I'm gonna be generous here. A two. I would rather give it a zero. But these figures, this one is even rarer, rarer than than the, the vampire. This just loose. You're talking about thirty bucks, thirty dollars US. That's a lot of money for a loose figure. Uh, mint in the package. It's about came out when it was it was forty nine ninety nine or thirty nine ninety nine. That's it, thirty nine ninety nine. I paid plus tax, it came to forty six dollars Canadian. I would say sealed. I would say it comes to like about fifty to sixty dollars US. I'm just saying. I'm taking a guess. But I I sold one version of her with all the little things that are smaller. Sold it for twenty dollars loose. Like I bought it right away. He goes, I'm gonna take Gotina. Took that in a book. Last year at my convention. Nice figure, uh, sought out figure now. Yeah, beautiful figure. All right, she's a vampire by the way. No, there's her, a vampire, a Frankenstein monster, and a witch, there's this four. Maybe I could be wrong. Last thing I wanna show you is something really big. So I'm gonna go big, I'm gonna go back here. It's about three feet tall. It's huge, it's not that heavy. And it's called Saturday Afternoon Monsters Figurette Dolls. That's it. Can't see the date. So small. So here's the little sign. Nothing inside. Made for a company I don't know where. Uh, made with wires. Metal in, its, in here. There's nothing really inside. Look at this okay same thing with the body it's just cotton you could maneuver the arms the, a little bit because it's wire it's very very thin it's like a scarecrow type don't know where they came from I know I paid a lot for this thing I told you this thing is about three feet tall 
I love the face expression. He's looking towards, a little bit towards the left, like he's looking at the moon. I, I cannot move much his head at all. Like it's not much articulation. Like I say, one, two. You can't move the legs at all. It's two point three points of articulation. But this thing is three feet tall. I paid seventy five dollars at a show in May, and I like it a lot. It's gonna be come to my show at uh, at uh, Montreal Horathon Part Two. There will be blood, and this is one of my. I had to buy it. The guy had it at say, 85. I go, would you take 75? He goes, yeah. I go, I, I go. I told him, I go, if you can, because I've been buying a lot of books off you in the past two shows, and I would really appreciate it to be like a display for my show. He goes, sure, no problem. And it was, he was okay with that. But you know, like I paid him in 20s and loonies, and it was nice, very nice guy, and I, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I give it a, I give this thing a five on five. It's really nice, really big. I told you, three feet tall. See? Even the feet are pretty cool. Nothing unneat at all it's like it was something homemade you know but it's a nice thing to any collector of the wolfman or werewolves but this is more the wolfman and like i said it just says saturday afternoon monsters figurette dolls and that's my haul of horror that i got in the past may to may june july august Passage Junkies in the Wild soon. I mean, leaving this video. And I want to tell you, horror for me, it's a genre of... It used to be a long time ago niche. Very small. Niche means small. It doesn't mean that it's big. And I like all kinds of horror, but I'm very picky. Like, I just rewatched all... I tried to rewatch all four movies of Toxic Avenger. And I gotta admit it, when I bought them five years ago, or seven years ago, they were amazing. Now, they're so cheesy that I I didn't know they'd be worth money. So I'm bringing those to my show too. And I have all the DVDs, I could have got them signed by the, the guy that created. He was there five years ago here in Montreal, Montreal Comic Con in July. And I got a signature on one of my Toxic Crusader toys. Uh, the, the, the inflatable, the, it was called the Hovercraft. And it said to, to me, plastic junkie, have fun and be toxic or something like that. And I love it. Like I did a review on that and I, I love it. I love stuff like that. For me, horror is everything. Uh, I like all different types of horror. Cartoon horror, this horror, that. It doesn't make a difference. But I'm super, super picky now in what horror movies I watch. Like, I'm tired of watching uh, remakes on top of remakes on top of remakes of everything everybody's ever doing a remake and it's it's ridiculous nobody does original movies and yes I'm not talking about everyone says yeah but Rob Zombie does original movies yeah but after he did Halloween 1 when he first started with House, House of 1000 Corpses amazing the second one is uh, Rob Zombie's uh, Devil's Reject amazing but when he did part two of Halloween, it, I didn't understand it. I did not like it. I cannot keep it in my collection. There's other, a Salem something. I didn't like it too. The Salem's Witch or something. I don't know what it was. I don't remember that one about the white witch there. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I just couldn't. I must have fallen asleep three times. But that's my opinion. You don't have to agree with me. Everybody has their own opinion in movies. Toxic. Avengers are amazing, but rewatched them so many times, they're very cheesy. But that's what's good, cool about it. For the 70 movies, 70s or 80s, they came out. And a lot of 70s and 80s movies are cheesy, but they're good. But I am so picky on buying DVDs that now I'd rather just trade for horror. So I'm turning away from mostly what I used to like superheroes and old vintage stuff, I don't mind. Pick up here and there with trades only. My G.I. Joe stuff. I know this is not horror. The vehicles are almost gone. Out of 40, I have like seven left. That's it. I sold so many and traded so many. I'm done with that. Like, I'd just rather have a figure on the wall than have another big vehicle being removed around in my toy room so many, so many times. Plastic Junkie is just kind of getting, I guess, older and more wiser in collecting. I like reading a lot. That's why, you know, I'm reading my books. But I can't justify to pay a book five dollars anymore it's ridiculously crazy 3.99 us comes to five dollars canadian that's nuts i'd rather buy, spend fifty dollars on an old book that it's going to pick up in value 
and then in 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, I'll sell it for $100. And I'll make my, triple the amount of what I paid. Plus Junkie out.